When I look at a map, I see opportunity. This is Patrick Quayle. He's a global network planning executive at United Airlines, which means he decides where the airline flies, when it flies, and what type of aircraft it flies. I can talk about planes forever. Quayle has more than 15 years of experience planning flight routes. You can also see Denver, the aircraft flying west. So he's here to explain how that process works and how an airline's route system affects travelers. There's two main network structures. There's hub and spoke and there's point to point. United and other legacy airlines like Delta and American use this model. The way the hub and spoke works, you have Denver as a hub, and then you'll have flights from, let's say, Lubbock, Albuquerque, Jackson Hole, and Las Vegas. These are the spokes. The spokes cities all fly into the hub. The passengers then change airplanes, and then those flights disperse to different cities across the country. Here's what that looks like on a real-time map. In Los Angeles and San Francisco, you can see traffic going out to Hawaii, traffic intra California, and then traffic coming up across the upper northeast. Here's what that looks like on an aircraft schedule. And the color depicts the hub. Aircraft number six, for example, it's flying from Korea, and every time it's in red, it's coming back to San Francisco. The spokes are designed to feed travelers into the hub around the same time to make connections easier and more efficient. But this also creates periods of very high and very low volume in the hub. You'll look throughout the day and it'll go peak trough, peak trough, peak trough. And that drives cost because you have a lot of activity and you have no activity. Hub and spoke is a more expensive model, which is why legacy airlines are the ones who typically use it. Low cost carriers, by definition, try to keep costs low. In order to support the hub, you need a couple different things. One, you need the assets, which is the gates, the clubs, the lounges, the terminal space. The second, you obviously need the employees. Another reason Hub and Spoke is designed this way is to feed travelers into larger aircraft for long haul flights. We'll have aircraft like this 737 flying into our hub, connecting to this large 350 seat aircraft that's gonna fly to a place like Frankfurt or Johannesburg. Quayle says that by connecting in a hub, travelers have more options when it comes to destinations, flight times, and rebooking in case a flight gets canceled. Often, many hub spoke carriers have service to multiple hubs. And so if there's a weather incident in a major hub, we could fly you over a different hub. And then once you get to that city, you can be reaccommodated on the network out of that hub. If there's an issue with the aircraft, hubs also typically have maintenance spaces. We can simply tow it to the hangar and tow a different aircraft up to continue the flight on. To pay for all this infrastructure, Quail says legacy carriers charge a higher ticket price. Meaning a better product, better experience, and hoping people will pay more for that product. Most low-cost airlines like Southwest, Spirit, and Frontier use a point-to-point -point system which works like this. You'd fly from San Antonio to Amarillo. In Amarillo, that aircraft might turn and go to Kansas City. And from Kansas City, it might go to St. Louis and then down to Jacksonville. Southwest says one benefit of this model is that because planes don't have to connect through a major hub, the airline can offer more nonstop flight options. If you live in a smaller community, take San Antonio, for example, there's a low cost airline there that has 20 different cities they serve out of San Antonio. Whereas if you're flying a legacy carrier, you're gonna to need to connect in a place like Houston, Dallas, or Atlanta. Though point-to-point -point carriers don't have official hubs, they do have larger locations that facilitate many of their connections. They usually have one fleet type, which simplifies their operation. They only have to have one crew and one maintenance team providing service to the exact same aircraft. The downside to this though, they're only able to serve mid-size and large cities and they can't fly transoceanic. Quayle says one of the challenges with a point-to-point -point model is the ripple effect if something goes wrong. If you're flying from San Antonio to Amarillo and then from Amarillo to Kansas City, if the airplane has a problem in Amarillo, it's gonna then impact the passengers going to Kansas City and those passengers getting on the plane in Kansas City who wanna to fly to St. Louis and then go beyond. Southwest says if a flight is facing a lengthy delay or is canceled between cities, the airline will bring in another aircraft or reroute travelers to minimize disruptions. But some industry experts say the point-to-point -point model may be one reason Southwest struggled to recover from severe winter storms last December, leading it to cancel over 16,700 flights. Southwest has held that the model wasn't to blame. According to Southwest, a point-to-point -point model brings in more redundancy during weather challenges, allowing the airline to get travelers home as quickly as possible through other routings. All airlines update their route networks throughout the year. These are the factors Quail looks for when deciding whether or not to add a new route. What's the nonstop demand? So how many people are in the major city going to the other city? How much support is coming in from all the different spokes, 
into that hub, which provide feed to that new flight that we'd be adding. If no other airline flies to that destination, that's another reason to add that route. But Quail says he also adds service to places with a lot of competition. In London Heathrow, for example, we've increased service from New York to London Heathrow to create more time channels throughout the day for a consumer to go between New York and London. Partnerships with other airlines also play a role in choosing where to fly. And the reason we have as many flights as we have into Frankfurt and Munich is for their ability to connect onto Lufthansa to go into Eastern Europe and North Africa. To add a route, Quail says airlines have to go through a government regulatory process, which prevents other carriers from piggybacking off their idea. And the process can take anywhere from a couple months to a couple years. I hope people appreciate the complexity and all the planning and work that goes in behind the scenes so that when they show up at the airport, they can get on a flight to go from point A to point B and have it operate seamlessly. The funniest misconception people have about me when they hear network planning is they think that I work in IT. 